There's literally hundreds of YouTube videos out there of guys making these cans here, but I just said I'd do one myself. First thing is this handle had to go, so I put a metal handle on top to significantly reduce the rattles. The lid really gave me a lot of issues. What I'm pointing at here are these Dayton Audio Soft Dome Neobium Magnet Tweeters. There's a Bluetooth antenna, DC voltmeter. That thing's like a piece of test equipment and that runs the amplifier. There's the base port there. It's a two inch internal diameter. Dual voice coil sub. Toggle switch kills the amplifier. See how it turns on right there? 24 volt is what I got the module set at. I'll show you that in a second. Let's say QC 3.0 USB for speedy charging, heavy duty power socket down there. On the side here I'm just going to show you some of the screw points. I'm using rubber washers too. This is a SAE 2 pin sidewall socket. I've got the lithium charger for it too rigged up. That works out really good there. All right, let's get to the good stuff on the inside here. As I said before, the lid was giving me a lot of issues. It's got a rubber gasket around there, but I put three layers of Silas 80 mil thick sound deadening material dampener on the top there. There's actually two layers of steel, and I managed to sandwich them together with that handle to keep it from rattling. Nailed it. What I'm pointing at here is actually that door edge guard you can use on your car or truck to keep it from dinging the guy next to you. That worked out really good. It's a stick-on type stuff. And that's just Gorilla Tape there on the end there where the hinge is located. Um, I'd like some single-sided. That's actually double-sided molding rubber tape stick-on stuff. So I got a nice solid sealed box right there. Now let's take a look at the good stuff here on the inside with this base port tube had to adjust that. I got this cabinet tuned for about 42 hertz and I used an online calculator to figure out you know your volume and port length and everything else. Pointing at there is the 100 watt times 2 Bluetooth power amplifier. I've got that set for 24 volts using this step up booster which is hard mounted to the back of the box with a striker plate it standoffs. Right down there, see if I can move this a little bit better for you, is the Dakota lithium 10 amp hour lithium battery. Saved me about three pounds over the charge tank VMAX. Right there are the dual audio pipe crossover networks. I used two of them in there. I couldn't avoid not using the crossover. It just sounds so much better with the crossovers in there. Right there is the Blue Sea Systems dual bus, and there's a single fuse going down to the battery on the positive side there. I used a rigid piece of wire there going into that booster, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, I have another one right here. See those little terminal points right there? just try sticking stranded ones in there. You can do it, but I find that a solid piece of copper going into those little things and then cinching them down works really, really well. Now let's see what else in here. Got the Bluetooth right there in the front. I may do a, a dual antenna system, but I'm not. One is working out just fine. A little bit more sound deadening in there. Oh, what am I pointing at here? Oh yeah, the tweeters right there. Just really prettied up all the wiring so there's no nothing rattling or loose inside there. Really, really a lot of work to get this thing. I, I've been at it for a couple of weeks now. You're talking about, yeah, that lid is really nice and secure. Now I'm going to show you how much money I spent on parts on this unit. And just think how much those Bose Wave Radio Bluetooth deals cost. It's about the same but this is cooler, right? 
lots of love and work put into this unit and also a lot of blood shed and solder drip on my knuckle if you saw it there in the video. Alright guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.